Hey everybody, it's Chavin, nobody else's auto. We are here at Mecham, Kansas City with Mr. Tom Wilhite, Pontiac guru, Pontiac performance expert, Wilhite performance. You know Pontiac's in and out, upside down, backward, frontward, and maybe a few other directions too, I think, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> From the ass into the front. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got a really, really special car here that you brought to Mecham, Kansas City. Now, I'm a fan of 58 Pontiacs. I've had mine since I was 11 years old. Mine's just a regular Ford or hardtop. You've drag raced a 58 Pontiac for years. Since 1971. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but you brought another 58 here that is super special, super rare, and uh, just has an amazing story. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this thing? Well, the car was originally a brass hat car. And when we say a brass hat car, it was it gave into a, a Pontiac representative that went around and called on the dealerships. And uh, after he had driven it five, 600 miles, why it the Pontiac sold it and they sold it to the uh, Drennan Motors in Winfield, Kansas. And then Winfield, Kansas had it for about six or eight months and a salesman that worked for him drove the car at uh, the uh, drag races in Great Bend, Kansas, and it won several trophies up there, and we've got trophies still today from that win. And uh, then they, the salesman sold it to a customer named Gerald Guy in El Dorado, Kansas, and he was the first titled owner, and, and uh, he uh, kept the car for a, a lot of years, and toward, after it got engine trouble they, they tore it down and then, then never did fix it and so it sat in the hog shed for about 20 years with water running underneath the hog shed and the car became surface rusted all the heck i mean it was not rusted clear through nowhere but just surface rust so finally they decided to sell it and i became the second title owner and uh, from there why that was about 15, 20 year ago, and finally I got around to working on it after building four or five other Pontiacs that got ahead of it. And after I did that, why, five, about four years ago, I started working on it, and it took me about three years to build it. And uh, here it is today, and last uh, summer we took it to, uh, to the uh, National Convention in Tulsa, and it got uh, a gold down there and uh, I don't I think it was 696 points out of 700 that it got so it scored pretty high so you did a pretty decent job on it yeah <laughs> well obviously it's a beautiful car red black insert just a stunning color combination on something you just don't ever see and, and how many fuel injected cars did Pontiac make in 58 well, it, they bought 500 units from from uh, Rochester, and uh, they didn't get all put on a car. Is that 57 and 58, or just 58? 58. Just 58. Okay. Yeah. The 58 unit had a cast aluminum intake. The 57 unit had a welded tube, a plenum style intake that was custom built, really. So the 57 and 58 fuel injected units are completely different. A little bit different. Okay. But mechanically, they work the same. Okay, but the but, manifold but was different. But the manifold was different. Okay. And uh, so in 58, they uh, uh, sold approximately 300 cars, got a fuel injection put on it. And out of that 300, probably a couple hundred of them were, went on chieftains and they were raced. Right. And the race cars, of course, led a hard life and didn't all survive. And as far <laughs> as I know, I've never seen another chieftain with fuel injection on it at any of the Pontiac National Conventions. And I've probably been to a dozen of those you've conventions. Been, you've been in the Pontiac world for a few years. So, so. I, it's not very common to find a chieftain that's got, still got fuel injection on it. You'll see a Bonneville ever so often, right. but you'll never, I've never seen another chieftain. So that's kind of the history of that. Well, let's take a look at this thing and tell us a little bit about your restoration. Obviously, these are these. I assume they are the original fuel injection emblems. Yes, they are. Because I don't know where you would ever find another one. Well, <laughs> there is a, a guy that did repop them, but he recently died, and oh. so the, that's that source is dried up. 
Now under the hood, this thing doesn't look anything like a normal 58 Pontiac. No. It, um, it's got what they call a turkey roaster that covers up the fuel ejection setup. On a Chevrolet, this is all open. And um, on Chevrolet in 1957, Smokey Unique was kind of baffled as to why the, uh, the Chevy engines on a dyno would make more power than the four barrel engines. Well, they finally discovered that when they'd get out on the track and run it, the, the four barrel engine would outrun the fuel ejection car. <laughs> so they wondered why in the heck was that? So they finally figured out that the ram air going through the, the front of the grill was messing with the diaphragms in the, in the fuel ejection unit. Oh, okay. Well, Pontiac was smart enough to cover up all that and eject the fresh air in underneath this fender okay and the air goes through underneath the fender and back into the air cleaner that's right because chevrolet had the unit right here with yeah. the air filter hanging yeah. off the side hung off the and side. all that air coming right through the middle threw everything out of whack so smoky unit finally figured that out for them and they i think they kind of resurrected the problem later but i don't know <laughs> just exactly how chevy fixed it but Anyway, but that's uh, why the Pontiac unit looks completely different with the cover, the air cleaner over to the side, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting information because I'm sure most people don't know that. They I don't understand know that. that. Yeah. And so if you want to do any adjustments, you have to take this little cover off, and you can change your idle speed and the air mixture underneath this cover. I see. And this car had power brakes as well. I can see. Yeah, it has power brakes, and but that was the only accessory it had. This car's got a radio delete plate. It's got a backup light deletes, so it didn't carry any extra weight that it didn't need. They just wanted to make sure they stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1959, it won several trophies. I think I talked about that earlier. But anyway, uh, the car's fastest time was a 1410 and a quarter mile. So that's pretty quick for an old 58 pound. At that point, at that point in time, that was very quick for yeah. a big, big, heavy, full-size, basically stock new car. Yeah. So obviously the side of this car looks great. Everything you had this car completely apart. Yeah, it was frame off on a restoration, uh, a rotisserie, and uh, the bottom, the only four pans that had to change was the driver's floor pan and the passenger uh, rear floor pan behind the seat, front seat behind the front seat, and then the front the front door pan on the driver's side where the driver sit oh, needs okay. to be replaced and uh, nobody really makes a floor pan for a 58 Pontiac so I had to take it to a, a metal fab guy that could take the old one and recreate a new metal one. So it had the correct stampings in it? It yep. the right creases and, and, and all the re reinforcements in it so that it looked right. Yep. And Let's so, take a peek inside of this thing while we're here. Yep. So we can look inside and basically just a stock 58 Pontiac, like you mentioned, radio delete. Yeah, right to the left of the glove box door is a plate of this just painted gray, and that's a, the plate that covers up where the radio used to, should be. Yep. And, uh, if it was a Star Chief car or a Bonneville car, the uh, dash bar went clear across and had ashtrays over, clear over to the right-hand side so the passenger could s sit and smoke a cigarette over there. The uh, seat pattern is kind of unique to 58 Pontiac where they staggered the white or the offset color to, compared to the rear. And then they had that uh, star built inside the, the upper seat back and so that it showed off the white in the car. And we'll come on around the back, and like you talked about, something that I don't think I've ever seen, and I've been around 58 Pontiac since I was 11, I don't think I've ever actually seen backup deletes in one of these cars. Yeah. Because even most of them had backup lights. Yeah, most of them had backup lights, yeah. And of course, the gas was filled through the, behind the gas door. And one even other kind of special thing for this car, here's the show program for this auction. Yeah, 
right on the cover. A testament to your restoration and the rarity and the special story of this car. And even has the fuel injection on the trunk lid as well. Yes. And were those the only three places that they had it? One on each front fender, one on the trunk lid. That's the way they came. So. Yep. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool. So anything else you want to tell us about this car, Tom? Well, it's got a 342 rear axle. It's got a positive track. And then 58 and 57, they used basically the same rear end, except the 57 had leaf springs and 58 had coil springs. Okay. And uh, they had a 28 spline axle. And then, and then in 1960, I think they started the 31 spline axle. So they went to a heavier axle in 59. <laughs> but in 59, it was a wider track. So right. And yeah. they were also an X-frame car. And this is an X-frame car. Yep. And um, so it's a two-piece drive shaft. And uh, center carrier berry is kind of hard to buy. <laughs> and it, it's got what they call a, Pontiac called it a Str Strato Street transmission. That was their name for it. But if you're in the transmission world, it was called a controlled coupling. And the reason they called it a controlled coupling is they had a, a like a torque converter that filled and, and dumped for different gears. I so see. In second gear, you fill the coupling, and in, and in second or third gear, you dump the coupling <laughs> and gain the clutch. And then when you go back to fourth gear, and fill the coupling again. <laughs> but when it made that fill the coupling, it was a real smooth shift. It was not boom. I see. The only time you kind of got a boom shift was going into third. I see. <laughs> so very unique situation there. Yeah, and they're so heavy that it takes three men and a kid to lift the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's super cool. So well, I appreciate you taking a few minutes and showing us this thing, walking us around it, sharing some of your knowledge because some of these cars, these old fuel injection units, a lot of people don't know them. Yeah. And, you know, in your knowledge of being restoring this car and knowing about them is great. Plus, the super cool story of this car, being in Kansas, knowing its race history clear back to when it was essentially brand new as the, as the dealer salesman was racing it, yeah. then sold it to another guy that raced it. And, well, the guy that he sold it to was respected the driver that sold the car to him. And he actually drove, it, drove the car for the, for the owner. <laughs> So that's pretty cool because you're not going to find a car like this. I mean, everybody's got stories about these old race cars, but having one of these cars that you know everything all the way back to 1958, unheard of. On top of the fact that it's a beautiful color combination, it's a beautiful restoration, and it's a super rare car. So, Tom, I appreciate you taking a few minutes with us and explaining all that. Are you still building Pontiac engines too? Oh yeah, every day. <laughs> I so, got a couple apart right now. So yep. Yeah, if you need a Pontiac race engine built, I think this is your guy too. Or so. just a stock rebuild. Too. Yeah, you can do those too. Yeah. So you, there ain't, I don't think there's anybody that knows them any better than you. And there's probably anybody that's built any more of them than you have for well, sure. So. As you, I build a lot better engine today than I did 20 years ago. So <laughs> kind of, you get a little bit smarter as you get a little, older. Well, that's a lot of knowledge and a lot of years of experience. Yeah. So. Tom, thanks again. Love the 58. And thanks for spending a few minutes with us and sharing the story of it. So. Good deal.